Hi, my name's Ian, and this series is all about universes, multiverses, planets, worlds, continents and cities. We're delving not into specific games, but into the milieus created for them. We'll be looking at where these settings came from, their major features, and why you should consider them for your own gaming experiences. Within episode two, we'll explore the third Imperium and the surrounding charted space that has become the extensively described and explored default setting for the Traveller science fiction role-playing game. Covering a speculative history of over 300,000 years, the universe, according to Mark Miller, is at once rich in detail but sparse in specifics, giving referees just enough to work with, but not so much, as to stifle their own creativity. Welcome to the far future. Traveller, the role-playing game, was first published in 1977 by Game Designers Workshop, initially, and still in effect, as a generic science fiction game with no specific setting. With influences rooted in classic science fiction novels such as the works of Dixon, Asimov, Heinlein, Piper, Doc Smith and others, and with Star Wars writ large across screens in that same year, before it was known as either Episode Four or A New Hope, it is no surprise that the broad genericism that Traveller offered included space navies and other military forces of undefined interstellar polities. Such terms as the Imperium, let alone a third iteration, had yet to form. However, some hint of some form of interstellar unity was present in those early rules. The Traveller's Aid Society, membership of which could be attained during generation and later play, which carried certain benefits. Although GDW also released a board game named Imperium in 1977, that and the Traveller RPG were, at least at this point, separate entities. The RPG did not reference the board game, and the board game had no reference to the RPG. That was later to change. The change began in 1978, with the expansion of the core rules in the form of Book 4, Mercenary. Within this work, the line... Traveller assumes a remote, centralised government, referred to in this volume as the Imperium, appears. This set the stage for further fleshing out of this assumption, coming in 1979's Supplement 3, The Spinwood Marches, supplemented by Adventure 1, The Kinoneer. It was also in 1979 that the Journal of the Traveller's Aid Society, or JTAS, began its initial run, a magazine of supplementary articles for Traveller published by GDW. Supplement 3 was an important step in the development of the Imperium. The first three classic Traveller supplements, 1001 Characters, Animal Encounters and the Spinwood Marches, all focused on elements of the game described in the core rules. Character Generation, Encounter Generation and World Generation. However, where the first two simply focused on stats, the third provides much more. We are introduced in the introduction, to the Zodani Consulate and the Varga Extents. And the Spinwood Marches represents a frontier of an Imperium whose centre lies about 120 parsecs away. That the Imperium has a calendar, and we're looking at a snapshot data for the year 1105. We meet the Darians and the Swordworlders, at least in identifying those worlds of the Marches that have allegiance to them. And we are introduced to the concept of library data, something that would shape the manner in which details of this background setting would be presented for years to come. This form would be used in adventures and supplements, JTAS and elsewhere, and much of it compiled into supplements 8 and 11, library data A to M and N to Z, respectively. In fact, it was within Supplement 8 where we finally got to see the Imperium and Charted Space writ large, with a map showing the Imperium and its surrounding neighbours, with a handful of named sectors. For the uninitiated, a sector in Traveller is an area of space roughly around 32 by 40 parsecs in dimension. Supplement 10 from 1982 further added detail by describing the Solomani Rim sector, the area of space relatively recently taken over by the Imperium, see the old Imperium board game, as revised to retrofit it into the Traveller line. 
In the meantime, further sectors were being detailed under licence to GDW. Judges Guild described a quartet of sectors on the training edge of the Imperium via its supplements on the Crucis Margin, Lay, the Glimmerdrift Reaches, and the Maranatha Alkahest sectors from 1980 to 1981. Paranoia Press presented The Beyond and the Vanguard Reaches in 1981. Fassa described the Far Frontier sector and others. Most, if not all, of this third-party sector information has since been decanonized from the Third Imperium setting. Of greater note, then, are the mid-1980s alien modules, describing the major alien species of charted space, along with a broad description of their domains, and 1984's Atlas of the Imperium, which mapped out 35 core sectors of the Imperium and its fringe. As Traveller, the game, progressed, more information was set down about its rapidly becoming default setting. By the time the game's second edition, Mega Traveller, arrived, most of the core systems were falling back to the Imperium default as Traveller's role as a generic science fiction game took more of a backseat in favour of it being the science fiction game depicting the Imperium and charted space. Through Classic Traveller's adventures, each date stamped with an assumed point in the Imperium's history in which the scenario events took place, Traveller had already established a marching timeline approach to the setting. This aspect became even more prominent through its second and third editions, with Mega Traveller advancing the timeline and the story of the Imperium onto the year 1116, and the start of a period of political strife and collapse, and Traveller, the new era, introducing the universe of 1201, with new polities emerging from the darkness of space following the Third Imperium's collapse. With the fourth edition, Mark Miller's Traveller, or T4, the Imperium's past became a focus, with Minus Zero, or the Third Imperium's beginnings, represented as the default setting. The idea of alternatives to the Third Imperium have always been present, right from the start of Traveller, where the expectation was for referees to create their own settings, through to the IMTU, In My Traveller Universe tags, commonly used as descriptors in forums. The iteration of GURPS Traveller, basically Traveller concepts put into the GURPS rules, initially explored an alternate timeline, where the events described in Mega Traveller did not happen, and the Third Imperium of 1116 more or less resembled that of the classic 1105 period. GURPS Traveller later went on to explore the distant past of the setting, with interstellar wars covering the conflicts marking the transition between the First and the Second Imperiums. Today, we have a fuzzier view of the setting. In the main line, the fifth edition of Traveller, doesn't make any assumptions regarding setting in its core rules, with what it does have to say about the Imperium and Charted Space broadly being limited to summarising the various eras of Charted Space's history, whether previously described by an iteration of Traveller or not. However, the T5 volume Second Survey does present data for 1105, the classic Traveller era, and acts as a more accurate and complete revamp of the previous Atlas of the Imperium. Mongoose Traveller, which is perhaps the most accessible of the current Traveller versions, sets itself firmly within the Third Imperium, again presenting the setting within its original classic Traveller time frame. The Third Imperium and its surrounding charted space presents a space opera-like setting cut in the mould of many classic science fiction literary patterns. It possesses some foundational assumptions that, to one extent or another, exist to serve the setting as a backdrop for gaming. These being, interstellar polities are vast and broadly uncaring when it comes to the manner in which individual worlds are governed. This means that every world has potential for adventure in its own right, without, say, the Imperium having created much in the way of uniformity among its member worlds. The Imperium provides background, but not theme, for the game, in all but the broadest sense. Faster-than-light communication does not exist. Communication between worlds operates on a Pony Express concept, using either officially sanctioned mail ships, exboats, or any old freighter that happens to be going in the right direction. This means that characters' reputations often don't precede them, 
at least until they've gained much in the way of notoriety within a given section of space. Clean breaks, when things in a given area are too hot, are possible, which enables long-term campaigns to be kept fresh. This also ties in with a point about impersonal interstellar polities and worlds being largely independent on a day-to-day governance basis. Communication is slow, so worlds just don't have the option to phone up the local sector capital for advice. It's up to the world to act as the world will act. Things can change. Given the timescales involved in the movement of characters from world to world, it can often be months, if not years, before characters revisit a particular world. Things may well not be as they were last time they were there. This provides a referee with an endless supply of surprises in his toolbox, where every hitherto believed safe haven might not be as safe as the characters expect it to be. Of course, the outcomes of the characters' exploits should also be considered, and it's somewhat gratifying for a group of players to have their characters revisit a world years later to see the fruits of their handiwork further down the line. Tying in with that last point, even within established and explored space, there is still room for exploration and survey. This aspect assumes that the data available, be it within the second survey volumes, travelermap.com or elsewhere, represents the current understanding of the status quo. But, as with road and trail maps today, such information can go out of date pretty quickly. Players interested in a bit of paid exploration need not boldly go where no man has gone before, but can actually go where plenty of people have gone before to make sure the traveller equivalent of the AA motoring atlas is still, at least in part, accurate. Potential for adventure is everywhere. Of many different stripes. If conflict is desired, this can be found from the fringes of known space to the hearts of the largest policies. If speculative trade is your thing, that's always a need. Many varied missions requiring a good amount of imagination and skill variety? Well, check the classifieds and the patrons at any starport. We've covered exploration, but this can delve even deeper into archaeology. Indiana Jones in space! Over the years, Traveller Adventures have covered a huge range of science fiction possibilities. Horror, boldly going, ragtag bands against the big evil, action adventure, research, space westerns, grand voyages, tent smuggling operations, all sorts. The setting is detailed, yet open enough to allow a referee's creativity to run riot. Perhaps the one danger the Third Imperium faces today is an overabundance of information. While publications of especially Mongoose in recent years have provided some great reading material, the Third Imperium and Charted Space have a beauty in their sparseness, where each gaming group can use the setting in their own idiosyncratic way to create the traveller universe which suits them best. If you play Traveller, yes, it's for you. It's a no-brainer. While Traveller, whichever edition, presents rules for creating your own subsectors and sectors of space, and it is often fun and rewarding to do so, my own Lucidian space campaign being an example, it can also be somewhat of a futile effort. By that, I mean with a ready-made, several displacement tons worth of material to draw upon, that you can alter in any way that you wish to build your own variant that already has space for virtually every science fiction tale that you wish to tell with your players, why wouldn't you avail yourself of that resource? Touching back to my Lucidian space setting, it was fun to build. It took an age. It evolved over time. It got tweaked here and there when things were found that didn't make sense and as background stuff happened to change the shape of the setting in general. When Mega Traveller Journal issue 4 came out in 1993, by, by which time Lucidian Space had been running on and off for 15 years, the material there on the Gateway Sector somehow appealed to me. Filling out this area from sector files that folks shared over the bulletin boards and forums back in the day, I ended up with a four-sector area comprising the region described by Judges Guild, previously mined for ideas but never used directly in play. 
With the Keith's storyline on top of it, I found that many of the old modules could also be adapted to fill in blanks. And hey presto, instead of spending my referee downtime trying to make one sector work logically, I had four sectors that already worked reasonably well together, and that downtime became more about writing adventures and updating the situations present on worlds as the campaign progressed. Far less work than doing everything from scratch, with foundational material that still felt like it was our campaign. Well over 15 years later, we're still there. Charted Space is huge, you can find a chunk of it fairly easily that suits what you want from a science fiction game, unless you're being very specific to a particular intellectual property. For a bit of a change, you can nip over the border from your chosen area for a change of pace before returning to the comfy socks sector to carry on carrying on. If you don't play Traveller, well, pick up the game already. But regardless, yes, the setting could be for you. The Imperium has already been used as a setting for GURPS, HERO and D20. There's absolutely no reason that it cannot form a playground for any other science fiction set of rules out there, possibly even those that are released for particular intellectual properties. The caveat would be that you'd need to learn to read the strange things such as universal world profiles or planet profiles if you are confusingly old school. But once you do, and can map them back to your own favourite game's methods of describing worlds, you're good to go. As a setting specifically designed to provide and enhance gaming opportunities, you cannot get much better across any role-playing game or genre. Thank you for watching. This has been episode two of uh, View Over the Mind You, dealing with uh, the Traveller third imperium and charted space as a setting um, episode three will be along shortly as will videos in the various other bits and pieces of series that we've uh, established on this channel so until the next one take care and farewell